have a very important poem named Bharchu to talk about. I am Dr. Naveen Kumar, Jha Associate Professor in English, RAGS College Ahilya Astham, under Kameshwar Singh Darbhanga, Sanskrit University, Darbhanga. The poem Bharchu is uh, about the virtuous soul. There are so many important things or beautiful things in this world, but uh, they have their limited lives. We can see so many good things like sweet day, sweet rose, sweet spring. But have you ever thought that uh, they have ever everlasting life? We can say that they too have their limited period of time to remain charm on the people. But uh, we can say that there are so many uh, good things which can live for some time, except the virtuous soul or virtue or the righteousness of the people. So here George Herbert, the poet, just uh, composes this poem into four stanzas containing four lines each. But uh, he has just to present here once again his religious fervor that he has been presenting in his another poem. So first uh, we are just going through the lines of the poem that is very sweet as is the sweet idea of the poem. Sweet day. Here the adjective sweet is for day. You remember the day which is sweet and the sweet day is always calm, always cool, always bright. When the day is calm, cool and bright, we call it a sweet day. We love it so much. And uh, the sweet day simply is uh, the indicator of the bridal of the earth and the sky. It is not possible to have such a sweet day full with uh, cool, calm and bright uh, atmosphere without the proper geographical condition on the earth and the sky. So the formation of sweet day is uh, just uh, due to the good geographical atmosphere on the earth and on the sky when they are coming together we find that sweet day is born so it is just a bridal between these two major natural things to make birth or to give birth of the sweet day so this is you know very phenomenal thing we can say that uh, every day is not a sweet day uh, some days are sweet day we find that uh, when sweet day happens we are very happy to find it but uh, it has to go the poet knows that uh, after a great deal of weight we find sweet day but uh, it has time to go off. It cannot remain here forever. So the dew shall we die fall tonight. You know, when the night falls, naturally the sweet day is to die. There is a contradictory relationship, a relationship of contradiction between day and night. When there is a day, there is no night and when there is a night there is no day 
so with the fall of uh, night we can say sweet day is gone and here at the departure of the sweet day dew is waiting our shedding of dew is all weeping of the sky weeping of the just uh, other natural things also because they all wish to have this thing for such a long time but alas they do not survive more than a few moments few hours so reason is that for the must die it is all the you know what we can call a uh, proposition that has been made by the poet that everything is to die it is uh, just what we can say is the fact that nothing is going to last long we cannot say that uh, we are going to find it happen for such a long time and uh, we cannot say that it is going to uh, live here forever it is what a kind of uh, uh, refrain is here that the poet has used we can find the this line for the must die for the must die and all must die you know in the first two stanzas we find for the must die the must die and on the basis of these two instances the poet has generalized it and uh, it has been made in uh, just a syllogism a kind of reference a kind of inference rather on the basis of two incidents that incidents of sweet day and incident of sweet rose the poet says that sweet spring is also to die and so everything is to die and all are to die all shall die you know it is what uh, a kind of uh, uh, just uh, logical derivation has been made here when two natural uh, things are just taking place we cannot stop third and all natural things to uh, take place you know that is death that is short life of the things which are here no matter uh, we are talking of the natural things like sweet day and sweet rose and sweet spring but they have to they must die now this is the first image in the first stanza that we have talked that uh, sweet day is not going to stay for long and uh, the poet is presenting in the second stanza the second image that is of sweet rose now here too you find that uh, we are charmed by the sweet rose also and we are charmed by the sweet day because it uh, uh, has certain traits like uh, uh, it is cool calm and bright so it uh, just uh, what we can call is in snares our mind and heart naturally another natural beautiful thing has been taken for instance that is of sweet rose and here what is the good thing what is the traits which have been responsible for making us being charmed that is who's you angry and brave you know how just uh, uh just uh, lasas how attractive its you is and bits the rash gaze of wife his eyes the uh, uh, just a sweet rose is very brave it uh, is very brave it is very angry it looks because it's a uh, hue is uh, just uh, so reddish and uh, the the passer by the gazer who is going by the sweet rose wipe his eye for the region that is its hue that is its color we can say that its color is uh, so attractive that uh, we are gazing and gazing we are just simply in surprise 
we are the gauge we lost ourselves we are wipe our eyes with surprise this is what it's a marvelous uh, quality is but here the third line as is the case with the third line of the first stanza is going to uh, move towards the death of that sweet rose as the dew shall weep so thy root is ever in its grief uh we can say the moment you are born we are moving towards death or death is already uh just another side of life or we can say that uh, uh, our death is very much rooted within we cannot say that uh, uh, uh we have to uh, just postpone death for any reason because that very element of death is always present in the same sheet with which you are born the seed contains construction or constructive and destructive elements both now uh, it makes the plants grow up but it also makes us to move towards destruction so everything is rooted finally into the grief we cannot say that uh, uh just uh, uh we are just uh, going to spare our life of death it never happens uh, and uh, we cannot say that because uh day is sweet rose is sweet so they should not be uh, falling into death everything either it is sweet thing okay the poet has given the uh, just uh, what he can call images of beautiful thing because for the reason that if the beautiful thing is bound to die then we can conclude that everything even less beautiful or the less least beautiful things are also going to die now quality does not stop the process of death we cannot say the person who is at the highest post is just uh, not going to die because he enjoys the highest prestige or status or the power so beauty has power you know what does it mean that it doesn't mean that it is going to pause the death for any uh, uh, just a region for any moment so the root is ever in its grief ever it is always death is always sure to take place it is uh, very much certain to take place you know uh, just we can say uh, it is very much uh, brave it is very much attractive uh but it doesn't mean that it is free from the uh just tragedy of death and so on so these two instances are going to uh make the thing clear that uh, whatever we are doing whatever the best thing we are doing in our life uh has a limited uh time to live yes they live as sweet day lips as a sweet rose lips naturally they live but only for certain time likewise we live we do so many good things so many beautiful things in our life but uh, they are just uh, existence is temporary we cannot say that they are going to live forever or we cannot say that uh, the thing or the exercise that you are making day in day out is going to uh, live all week uh, just uh, whatever has been constructed is bound to be destructed uh, and also the poet is of the view that yes uh, there is a chance uh, of uh, what he can call death any time you know we are not going to repent for the reason that uh, uh, someone has uh, died early Uh, or there should be some more life on the part of that person this kind of uh, just uh, excuse to avoid death is uh, not acceptable because death happens and it can happen any time it uh, is not uh, looking at the length of the life that the people have lived 
we cannot say that a child should not die because child is also dying young is also dying and old is also dying there is no difference in the process of death or the phenomenon of death is uh, just uh, working on uh, all the things irrespective of the time irrespective of the age or iris irrespective of the beauty or the achievement and so on now we are coming to the fourth stanza that is sweet spring it is also full with some traits you know what sweet days and sweet roses when the spring comes yes you find that day naturally becomes sweet because it is a rosy atmosphere all around us and uh, just we can say that uh, uh, spring brings out lots uh, lots of rosy uh, atmosphere lots of uh, uh, natural things to come out the things which were just hidden in some of the others a spring just uh, gives uh, you know just a kind of atmosphere to bloom uh, so you can say that uh, it is all sweet days or we can say that uh, um, just first image of sweet day is uh, more just observed in sweet spring so sweet spring is uh, just due to sweet days and uh, most of it you find sweet days taking place into sweet spring and it has been compared here just a what a box where sweets compacted lie you know it is just like a box which is very densely full with uh, sweets how can you imagine you know there is everything uh, and there are so many things and just everything is pleasant in uh, just a spring we hardly find just uh, anything which is tragic when we are talking about uh, just a uh, spring uh, because it is another name of the sublime day it is another name of the most beautiful moment of the year so we we find that a comparison just uh, has been made it is very much metaphorical you know metaphorically sweet day has been described uh, in terms of the bridal of the earth and the sky or sweet spring is also metaphorically described in terms of the a box where sweets are sweets compacted like and we find that it is melodious it is musical we find that everywhere uh, the music is just uh, rising up maybe it is the music of uh, the chirping of birds maybe it is the music of flowing of waters maybe it is the music of uh, what you can call just uh, uh, movements of the leaves or so on so different sorts of sounds are rhythmically coming into a uh, sweet uh, spring so uh, my su- music so ji have your roses and all must die so all must die is the climax we can say that everything ha- is to die here you know we, we have just uh, come to conclude that a uh, uh, step by step poet is just going to the conclusive remarks in the third stanza when he uh, just makes the statement thou must die in the first two stanzas it is only uh, uh, refer to sweet day and sweet root that uh, the poet is uh, just talking about the very much good traits however he says and contradiction is that sweet days die and so it is just uh, the address that the poet is making to sweet day and sweet roach but this time we'll say all must die including a spring including so many other beautiful things that we can watch here we can watch here on the earth several beautiful things there is no dearth of beautiful things as are sweet day sweet rose sweet spring and so on we can i find that this earth is replete with so many sweet things and beautiful things but we must uh, uh, um, be observing that they have their just a limit to stay they have their time to remain here you know we cannot say that they are everlasting we find no it never happens and so it is all uh, just uh, a kind of uh, 
जस्ट डेरिवेशन है जिंदगी की काइंड ऑफ लॉजिकल डेरिवेशन है जिंदगी एंड वी कैन से इट इज इंडक्टिवली से दैट एवरीथिंग इज टू डाई एंड ऑल मस्ट डाई इ रेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एनी थिंग्स दैट यू कैन थिंक ऑफ एक्सेप्ट वन एक्सेप्ट वन दैट इज द फाइनल स्टेंजा ऑफ द पोइम यू नो फाइनल स्टेंजा इज that only a sweet and virtuous soul yes soul never dies especially when you're talking about sweet and virtuous soul you know here he is making uh, a kind of differentiation between the soul and the sweet soul yes we can say that uh, soul is not to die soul is uh, changing its uh, uh, just physical shape now from uh just john uh it becomes mahesh uh there are two physical existences but uh, after the demise of john mahesh is born and the same soul just resides into john's body and now it is in mahesh body but uh, what is the thing it is all the you know immortality of soul that has been told and retold again and again we can say that the uh, story of uh, immortality of soul has been all, uh, almost told into all religious textures but uh, that is uh, the thing uh, which happens that ordinarily we find that soul does not die uh, but uh, people die and uh, with the death of a certain pe- person we can say that existence is gone and we do not know in what form that soul is once again born we are simply uh, not so um, just uh, powerful for sighted to see that soul of john has come into uh, the body of mahesh this time it it is not possible on our part to talk about this thing but here it is one thing that is clear that if it is virtuous soul it is sweet soul we can say that it will always live it does not uh, just uh, go and travel from one body to another body you know if a john soul is virtuous is sweet uh, we can say that soul will always remain people will always uh, feel the presence of that soul we cannot say the soul of jesus christ has always been living we cannot say that it is uh, going to die ever and the similar is the soul of lord rama lord krishna buddha mahavira and uh, uh, just so on so all the prophets and the soul of all the prophets are just uh, virtuous and so they always remain we can say that these souls are uh living forever they do not need uh, just uh, to take uh, a new birth because they are living for generations it is why he said life season timber never gives we find the timber which is season which has uh, just faced so many seasons and it's the uh, old it we can say that uh, uh, just a uh, you know uh, uh, just the timber is not going to decay so easily and it always remains and remains so we can say but though the whole world turn to gold then chiefly lips now the life is gone the world is gone we can say we can assume the situation and it has been uh, just taking place uh, uh, into the history of civilization that uh, one civilization uh dies another civilization is uh, just constructed so even no civilization is living permanently so the world is changing we can say this world is changeable uh, we find that uh, world is not going to stay for uh, just all the time to come uh, so just one kind of system is going to turn into the coal it is bound to happen and uh, we find that when one kind of system is going to die we do not find that uh, uh, just the virtuous soul is going to die also 
with uh, the change of uh, the uh, world virtual soul does not change you know it is always living in our life it is always living in our uh, just a system so it is here what we are talking about we find that the system is just uh, uh, changing uh, and the world is changing world is made the world is born world dies irrespective of all these kind of things it happens that soul or virtuous soul never dies it always remains and we always remember as jesus is always remembered and lord rama krishna and so many other prophets are always remembered so this is what the major uh, just a point of discussion of this poem uh, is now we can I just talk about few words that uh, we have chosen from the poem that we have just talked so it is bridal we find that it is conjugal related to marriage you know it is adjective and so it is you that is noun and it is chromaticity color in general term you can say and it is an abstract noun so we can also say that the quality of color determined by the wavelength generally and here it is bit tender and uh, rash it is reckless heady then we can talk about the word like gaze from the gaze bar uh, we have made it common noun by adding er suffix so the person who gazes is known as gazer and uh, so why rush rub sorry not rush rub and uh, just uh, compact it densely it is adjectival form past participle form uh, that has been used here so it is virtuous pure and seasoned now once again we can say that uh, timber has been described by the adjective uh, seasoned here in this poem so we can say a strong after facing odds of many seasons so it is what seasoned timber is and timber is old and give is decay so we can say that today we have just uh, uh, talked about uh, just a uh, uh, main uh, idea that was very much uh, uh, in the poem uh, and the poet has laid down this kind of uh, philosophy of life uh, his view of life his view on virtuous soul rather so let us try to just uh, make our soul virtuous you know soul is always pure it is always said in our text religious texts especially that uh, it remains uh, aloof uh, from our actions or uh, most of it is also said that uh, soul is not uh, uh, affected by our good and bad acts it is always pure but uh, here the intention is to talk about that if we are doing some good actions virtuous actions our soul is definitely remembered for that work you know because uh, we are remembered not for our uh, physical existence but also for our uh, spiritual existence and soul relates to our spiritual existence so we can uh, try to make our spiritual life virtuous uh, and uh, when our uh, uh, spiritual life becomes virtual virtuous we always remain alive that is what the main focus of the poem is that the poet has given to us and you people should think in that 